Huka Yordani ni kipindi cha mafundisho ya neno la Mungu kinacholetwa kwako na mtumishi wa Mungu askofu mkuu wa makanisa ya Grace Evangelical Church Tanzania askofu Elibariki Sumbe Yote ni ndani ya kipindi cha Vuka Yordani. Karibu tujifunze pamoja ili ujengwe kiroho. Roho wa Bwana Mungu juu yangu. Bezemwa chelia watoa. Atelia taifa la Mungu. Let's go the nation of God. wana wa Mungu wale. Kuna mashtaka tena juu ya. Atelia vizazi vya. Siku tatu za kufunguliwa jijini Mwanza. Kamati ya maandalizi ya huduma chini ya mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Elibariki Sumbe imekuandalia mkutano mkubwa wa injili katika viwanja vya furahisha jijini Mwanza. Mkutano huu utaongozwa na mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Elibariki Sumbe kutoka jijini Arusha kuanzia tarehe tano hadi tarehe saba mwezi wa tano 2023 muda ni kuanzia saa 8 kamili mchana kumbuka ni siku tatu za kufunguliwa na kuwekwa huru mbali na laana uchawi roza kukataliwa roza mizimu miungu majini na magonjwa wote watafunguliwa na wasioweza kutembea watatembea ni katika viwanja vya furahisha jijini Mwanza mawasiliano ni 0766 962 unaposikia tangazo hili mjulishe na mwingine watu wote mnakaribishwa na wale wanaoandika andika ujumbe unaosema wito unaofuatana na ishara za Mungu If you're writing for what today message is a calling that goes together with the sign of God Kitabu cha Mathayo sura ile ya tisa. The book of Matthew chapter 9 Tutasoma ule mstari wa 35 mpaka 38 We're going to read verse 35 to 38 Na tutaendelea sura ya kumi mstari wa kwanza And then we're going to move to chapter 10 verse 1 Na Yesu alikuwa akizunguka katika miji yote na vijiji akifundisha katika masinagogi yao na kuihubiri habari njema ya ufalme na kuponya magonjwa yote na udhaifu wa kila aina. Mstari wa 36 na alipoona makutano aliwahurumia kwa sababu walikuwa wamechoka na kutawanyika kama kondoo wasio na mchungaji. 37 na 38 na ndipo alipoambia wanafunzi wake mavuno ni mengi lakini watendakazi ni wachache. Basi muombeni bwana wa mavuno apeleke watendakazi katika mavuno yake. Hebu sema amina. Please say amen. Sura ile ya kumi mstari ule wa kwanza. Let's go to chapter 10 and verse 1. Akawaita wanafunzi wake kumi na wawili akawapa amri juu ya pepo wachafu wa watoe na kupoza magonjwa yote na udhaifu wa kila aina. Sema amina. Please say amen. Wito unaofuatana na ishara za Mungu ni wito wa namna gani? The calling that comes with the signs of God is, quite, is what kind of a calling? Wito unaofuatana na ishara za Mungu. A calling that comes with the signs of God ni wale walioitwa. Is those that were called na Mungu kuwatenga. And God have set them apart. 
kisha akawadhihirisha mbele ya makundi kwamba hao ni watumishi wake na Mungu yuko pamoja nao and then he introduced them to the multitude that these are my servants and i work with them na hao watumishi kazi yao kubwa na kutawa wanahubiri habari njema ya ufalme wa Mungu they preach the good news of the kingdom of god tumishi yote ambaye Mungu amemwita any servant that god have appointed na kisha akamtenga and then set apart kuna watu wengi wanaweza wakaitwa lakini hawajatengwa. There are so many people that can be called but not set apart. Haleluya. Haleluya. Na hiyo ni hatari sana mtu asipoelewa wito wa kwanza unaweza ukaitwa ukapakwa mafuta kwa wito wa kuandaliwa. Uh, most people can be confused because you can be appointed as a first calling and be anointed as to be prepared. Na ukakaa kanisani ukiwa unajua kabisa kuna kitu kinaendelea cha wito ndani yako lakini usipoandaliwa mpaka uje utengwe na Mungu watu wanapoondoka wakiwa wana ndani ya wito matokeo yake wanaenda kuharibu mwili wa Kristo hawafikii kwenye hatima ambayo Mungu alianza kuwaitia unaweza kaitwa you may be appointed ni wito wa kwanza it's an first appoint lakini kwa kusudi la Mungu lazima mtu huyo andaliwe kisha aje atengwe But for the purpose of God that person must be prepared and afterwards to be set apart. Paul mtume Paul the prophet ni mfano wetu. It's our example. Daudi mfalme King David ni mfano wetu. Is our example. Daudi aliitwa na Mungu. David was appointed by God. Biblia sema ni mtu wa upendezaye moyo wa Mungu. And the Bible say is a person who pleases the heart. Yeye alichaguliwa na Mungu tu kwa sababu aliupendeza moyo wa Mungu. He was appointed by God because only he pleased the heart of God. Hiyo ndio ilikuwa CV ya Daudi mfalme. That was the CV of David the king. Na ili aitwe Mungu alimwamuru Samueli aende kwenye boma la Yese kwenda kumtia mafuta maana amemwita Daudi kuwa mfalme wa Israel. And for him to be appointed God sent the prophet Samuel to go and anoint David for him to be called. Na alipoletwa And when he was brought akatiwa mafuta. He was anointed kunagutiwa mafuta sehemu ya wito wako kuandaliwa there is to be anointed as part of you to be appointed nao ni wito and that calling na baada ya kupakwa mafuta haikuonekana shida sana and after being anointed is does not have any problem mungu akaanza kusababisha namna gani ataanza kuzoea kwenda ikulu ama kwenye kasri la mfalme God causes an an a situation that gonna cause uh, david to start visiting the white houses or the mungu palace mungu akikuita when god atakuandalia njia ambazo utatembea nazo na kupata kibali hatimaye ufike kwenye kutengwa kwako He gonna create a way that you gonna walk in and have the favor until you reach the way of you to be set apart Sema amina kama unanielewa Say amen if you understand Mungu alimwandalia Daudi pamoja alikuwa mchunga mifugo. God prepared for David though he was taking care of sheep. Pamoja na CV yake ilikuwa inaonyesha kwamba mdubu na na simba walikuwa wanataka kuvamia mifugo lakini yeye alipewa nguvu za kiroho kuwaua wale kibinadamu na mifugo yake kabaki kuwa salama. Though he had a CV to fight uh, both uh, lion and bear to protect the sheep. Lakini Mungu aliongeza kitu kingine ndani ya moyo wake ili kuja kumsafirisha kwenda kwenye kasri la mfalme Sauli. But God added something else in his heart that gonna cause him to visit the white house of Saul. Mungu akikuita When God appoints you anaanza kuwekeza vitu ndani yako ambao utapata kibali cha kwenda hata utakapofika saa ya kutengwa kwako. He gonna invest materials that gonna cause you to go very quick to reach the point of you to be set apart. Mungu akamwekea Daudi uimbaji na kusifu. God gave David an power to sing and praise. Na uimbaji ulikuwa wa namna ya pekee sana. And he had a very unique praising. Umesababisha katika Israeli nzima mpaka mfalme Sauli akasikia kwamba kwenye boma la Yesse kuna kijana mdogo akiimba mbingu zinafunguka. Huyo ndio anafaa kuja kuimba kwa mfalme juu ya nchi yote. So the news went all over Israel that there is a son from a Jesse's house that can sing and cause the heaven to descend that is the one that have the favor to come and sing before you and ndipo naona Daudi anakuja kuchukuliwa and we see David was taken na kwa sababu Mungu alikuwa anamwandaa basi akachukuliwa akapelekwa kwenye kasri la mfalme Sauli and because God was preparing him so he was taken to the palace of, of Saul for the people that remember 
Alipofika kwenye kasi la Sauli angalia alivyokuwa anaimba nyimbo nzuri kwa kinanda safi na sauti yake iliyo nzuri mpaka ile roho mbaya iliyokuwa inamjia mfalme Sauli ili kuharibu nchi ikawa inaondoka. Yaani yenyewe inaondoka ijawekewa mikono Mungu anashuka na utukufu wake ile roho ya Sauli ikaondoka. Alafu yule kijana kapata heshima ya kutambuliwa katika nchi. We see when he, he was before the king saw he started singing praising and the lovely songs that caused the heaven power to descend and as a bad spirit that was in Saul's heart that wanted to destroy the country was departing because of the praise that he did before the Lord the calling that follows with the signs of God most people are being called and they search their own way to to reach God that's why they fall in the hand of the Satan and he gives them on magic way on how to walk and fool and deceive the human being And until Saul started pray for the for, for David. Vita vikaanza hapo kumuonea wivu kwamba mtu huyu inakuwaje akimba paka roho zile eh, maagano yale ya giza yanaondoka Mungu anatawala ile kasi la ufalme wa Israeli. So Saul started being envy towards David because he say who is this kind of a person that wherever he sings all the bad spirit and evil spirit departs and there's a kingdom of God that descends. Ambaye inamaanisha that means Ufalme wa Sauli tayari alikuwa amegeuka kama vile waahabu tayari alikuwa anamwabudu shetani. That means the kingdom of Saul was already turned worshiping Satan like the kingdom of Ahabu. Na Mungu alikuwa bado anaendelea kumuonya kumwambia pana Israeli ni taifa langu. Kwa hiyo mimi tainua mtu ambaye atakuja kwa sauti yangu wakati ananiita kwa njia ya nyimbo na kusifu utaona ufalme huu ulio uchagua wa shetani utakimbia. Mimi nitatawala inchi hii kupitia wewe. And God say no I'm gonna bring someone who gonna praise and worship me and I'm gonna descend and remove all the evil spirit and the kingdom of Satan and I'm gonna de- descend on you and use you on this nation. Kwa hiyo kwa maneno mengine So in another words Daudi David kaanza kupambana na ufalme wa kuzimu ambao tayari umepata nafasi kwenye eneo eh, ama kwenye utawala wa Sauli. He started fighting against the evil kingdom that already had an opportunity in the heart of Saul. Nina habari njema. I have a good news. Juu ya taifa letu. About our nation. Mungu anakwenda kuinua vipawa. God is going to arise up talents ambavyo vitakapokuwa vinainuliwa juu as how they are going to be elevated up wala watu watakuwa naandaliwa katika wito those people will be prepared in the calling kwenda kutengwa to go and be set apart haijalishi atakuwa na umri kama wa daudi it doesn't matter if you're going to have a talent like david haijalishi atakuwa na umri mkubwa maana mungu anachagua mtumishi wake yeyote amtakaye because god chose any servant that he will lakini mahali popote atakapoimba hata kama ajaenda kwenye ikulu la Tanzania but anyway the person who sing even if it's not in the white house madam yuko Tanzania as long as in Tanzania watakuwa wanaimba na wanapoimba utukufu wa Mungu utashuka kila ufalme wa shetani utaondoka katika nchi Has they gonna start singing and singing the kingdom of God gonna descend and the kingdom of the enemy gonna depart Tunakwenda majira mengine We are going in another season Ambao Mungu anakwenda kufanya kazi kwa namna ya pekee sana God is going to work in a different way Sawa katika taifa letu Especially for our nation Watu watakaa salama viongozi watakaa salama serikali itakwenda kama Mungu anavyotaka si kama wao wanavyotaka People will be well and the, the, the government will be safe and leaders will walk on the line of God not how they wish but how God wishes Akina Daudi wanaandaliwa The David have been prepared Bado hawajatengwa They have not yet set up Lakini ishara zitafuatana pamoja na wao But sign will follow them kuitwa sio kutengwa but see a calling is not a set apart kuitwa ni kuandaliwa to be called is to be prepared na mungu kukupandia vitu vyake ndani yako and got to plan his things in you lakini unapokwenda ukimpendeza ukamaliza vile vipimo vyako shule yako chuo chako ndipo mungu sao sio zani anakutokea kwenye ulimwengu wa roho kwenye kiti chake cha enzi anakupaka mafuta rasmi ya kukutenga na kuthibitisha hayo And to prove all of that. Sura ya 13 ya matendo ya mitume mstari wa kwanza. Chapter 13 in, in the book of Acts and verse 1. Biblia nasema. The Bible says. Na huko antukia katika kanisa ilo kuwako palikuwa kwa na manabii na waalimu. Nao ni Barnaba na Simeoni aitwaye Nigeri na Lukio Mkreene na Manaeni aliyekuwa ndugu wa kunyonya wa mfalme Herode na Sauli. Bas Unamwona na Sauli yuko hapo eh? walipokuwa kimfanyia Bwana ibada na kufunga, Roho Mtakatifu akasema, "Nitengeni 
Barnaba na Sauli kwa kazi ile niliyowaitia. Say so set me apart Barnaba and Saul for the work that I've called them. Hawaanzi kwa kutengwa wanaanza kwa kuandaliwa kuitwa. They are not start by being set apart they start by being called. Walisha itwa nyuma. They've already been called before. Lakini walikuwa kwenye maandalio. But they were being prepared. Na baada kufaulu mitiani yao na vyo vyao vya kiroho. But after passing their test and challenges spiritually. Lipo Mungu anawatenga rasmi katikati ya makundi ya watu. Is then God set them apart in the middle of na, uh, the multitude. Na kutoka hapo kitengwa. And then from there once you've been set apart ishara zitafuatana na hao watumishi sign must follow these servants very Mahali very important mungu amekuweka kwenye madhabahu anywhere god put you to the altar na ukajua yule mtumishi wa mungu bila kujali cheo chake ni mwalimu ni mchungaji ni nabii ni mwinjilisti ni mtume vyo vyote ambaye mungu amempa huduma ya kulea roho za watu ni vizuri kumuombea maana ukifanya udhaifu akiharibika na we kizazi chako hicho kitaharibika mpaka cha nne to any altar that God will put you is better you pray for that servant regardless of his position a teacher a pastor or anything pray because if you don't pray for him if he get be destroyed you be destroyed not only you but the fourth generation of yours unamkumbuka kuhani eli kwenye biblia you remember uh, the priest eli na yeye aliitwa na mungu He was called by God. Alitembea na Mungu. He walked with God. Alipoharibika yeye. When he was destroyed. Macho yake yakapofuka. And his eyes went blind. Bibi asema akawa ni mnene tu anafanya vitu vya ajabu. The Bible say he was just doing. Na watoto wake wakaharibika. And even his children were destroyed. Alipokufa. When he died. Watoto wake nao walikufa kwa siku moja. Even his children died in the same day. Wangapi wanaelewa kitu nasema? How many people understand what I'm saying? Watu wengi hawajui hivyo kwa sababu wanaendaka kwenye makanisa wakijua ni dini zao. Most people don't know this because they go to the church as they just following religion. Lakini ukielewa madhabahu hiyo kwamba Mungu amemtenga huyo mtumishi bila kujali ni wa namna gani, wa dini gani? But if you understand that uh, order that that servant have been set apart regardless the tribe or religion. Maana yeye ametenga na Mungu kumleta Mungu because I've been set apart by God to bring God hata kama watu wadhaifu kiasi gani yeye ndio mlango wa kuzuia mauti watu isiende yeye ndio mlango wa kuzuia lana isiende kwa watu yeye ndio sababu because that servant will be the reason the interest is to pass death or healing or who will be the reason or everything Unapojiunganisha na hiyo madhabahu as you connect yourself to that no kama mwaminifu kuiombea na hiyo madhabahu imesimama vizuri you be faithful to pray and the altar is standing family hata kama mnasali kanisa la maelfu ama kanisa la 100 la watu 300 la watu 400 la watu 20 la watu 5 chini ya mti vyo vyote maana madhabahu hiyo ni nzuri mtakuwa salama na nyie na vizazi vyenu roho wa bwana mungu biju yangu Siku tatu za kufunguliwa jijini Mwanza kamati ya maandalizi ya huduma chini ya mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Elibariki Sumbe imekuandalia mkutano mkubwa wa injili katika viwanja vya furahisha jijini Mwanza mkutano huu utaongozwa na mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Elibariki Sumbe kutoka jijini Arusha kuanzia tarehe tano hadi tarehe saba mwezi wa tano 2023 muda ni kuanzia saa 8 kamili mchana kumbuka ni siku tatu za kufunguliwa na kuwekwa huru mbali na laana uchawi roza kukataliwa roza mizimu miungu majini na magonjwa wote watafunguliwa na wasioweza kutembea watatembea ni katika viwanja vya furahisha jijini Mwanza mawasiliano ni 0766960220 na 0782550710 unaposikia tangazo hili mjulishe na mwingine watu wote mnakaribishwa Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jina langu naitwa Jimson Mwakaliku na pembeni yangu ni mke wangu anaitwa Happiness Mwakaliku. Naomba nimpishe yeye aongee kwanza alafu mimi nitaongea pale mwishoni. Karibu. Bwana Yesu asifiwe kanisa. Tunalipenda kanisa la Vuka Yordani. 
Kwa majina yangu ninaitwa Happiness Jimson Mwakaliku, ni mshirika wa mahali hapa. Tuko mahali hapa kumshukuru Mungu kwa matendo makuu Mungu aliyotutendea toka tulipofika kwenye madhabahu hii. Tulikuja kwenye madhabahu hii mwaka 2014 mwezi wa sita tukiwa na hali mbaya sana hali ya kiuchumi na hata hali ya kupigwa sana na kushushwa sana tulikuwa tunamtumikia Mungu na tulikuwa tunafanya huduma nilikuwa na huduma ya kuombea watu kama Mungu alivyoniita na nilikuwa nalelewa kwenye madhabahu zingine lakini toka nilipokuja kwenye madhabahu ya Bishop Sumbe ndipo nilipoanza kuiona njia yangu iliyokuwa imefungwa sana na tulifunguliwa vifungo vigumu vifungo vya laana vifungo vya mizimu iliyokuwa imetuzuia vifungo vingi ambavyo vilikuwa vimetukamata tulifunguliwa sana tulikuwa tunakaa kwenye miji ya watu tulikuwa tumepangisha huko na wakati mwingine tulikuwa tunashindwa hata kulipa kodi tulikuwa tumefika mahali ambapo tunakuwa ni watu wa kudaiwa madeni hata inafika wakati unasubiri ulipe madeni unalipa mpaka watu wengine wakawa nasema hawa watu hawawezi kulipa madeni ya watu tulikuwa tunasimangwa Yaani mpaka kila mtu akikuona anakudharau bure. Mahali ambapo tulikuwa tunalelewa ikafika mahali mpaka watu wanainuka wanasema mahali hapa ambapo sitaweza kupataja jina akawa anasema kwamba yani hawa watu hata wakifiwa hawana mahali pa kuzika watoto hawana mahali pa kwenda yani hawa ni maskini tupu anatenga washirika wale wenye nguvu anakaa nao anatusimanga anafanya vikao anawaambia msiwape chochote anasema hawa ni maskini msiwape kitu chochote kwa hiyo na yeye mwenyewe akawa mlango wa kutufungia Tukao sisi tunafanya tu kazi ya Mungu kwa uaminifu. Lakini namshukuru Mungu aliyetuleta kwenye madhabahu ya Askofu Elibariki Sume. Mungu amempa neema ya kulea vipawa na karama. Yaani yeye atakulea hata kama uko chini sana, hatakulea bora usiwe na kiburi cha uzima. Tunamshukuru Mungu aliyetuleta kwenye madhabahu hii ambayo imetutetea. Ime Tukaja tukapata kiwanja, Mungu akatubariki nyumba nzuri baada ya kufika hapa tulikuwa tunakuja tunakaa tunasikiliza tunafunguliwa na watoto wetu na ndugu zetu na jamaa zetu wamefunguliwa tulikuwa ni watu maskini sana Mungu akafungua pia watoto wetu akapata ada tukaweza kulipia watoto shule kafika wakati baba askofu akawa anafundisha kongamano la, la wamama kanisani akatamka baraka kwa wamama baada ya hapo tukiwa pale kwetu kuna kiwanja ambacho kiko nje ya pale tulipo wakatokea watu wanasema jamani hiki kiwanja kinauzwa huyu mtu anauza hiki kiwanja lakini Mungu akatupa neema akatufungulia njia tukapata kile kiwanja tena kikawa cha pili na kuna wakati baba alisema mtaitiwa viwanja kuna watu watakuja wataitiwa viwanja Watu wataitua viwanja mtu atakwambia ata tu chukua tu hata lipa kidogo kidogo. Hiyo ikatupata tena sisi kiwanja cha ta, tatu. Tukapata tena kiwanja kingine. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Na kingine pia Mungu alitusaidia kwenye hii madhabahu ametubariki magari mawili. Mifika wakati hata wale wa kwezangu waliokuwa wana vita na sisi sasa hivi wametulia ni kwamba wanatupigia simu na tuambia yani tunaomba ushauri wenu maana mkitushauri nyie mambo yataenda Bwana Yesu asifiwe labda na mimi niongezee kidogo hapo kwa sababu ameshaongea mengi tulikaa kwenye nyumba kupangisha kwa muda wa miaka kumi na mitatu Tumeendelea kukaa pale kama jinsi alivyoeleza mke wangu ilifika wakati tukashindwa hata kulipa kodi mwenye nyumba akawa anatufukuza na kumbuka tulikaa muda wa, mi, wa miezi saba hatujalipa kodi mwenye nyumba akasema ondokeni umeme akatukatia yani tulikuwa tuoni njia yoyote Yesu atusaidie sana lakini baada ya kukanyaga tuvu ka Jordan mwaka 2014 Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hiyo baada ya kukanyaga Vukayoda ni mwaka 2014, neno ambalo nilokutana nalo madhabahuni siku ile ilikuwa kwenye Isaya 60 ambayo baba alifundisha neno linasema kwamba inuka uangaze kwa kuwa nuru yako imekujia. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Nilikutana na amani moja ya pekee sana. Watu tuliokuwa tuna, tunashindia uji wa mtoto, leo hii Mungu ametuinua na sisi tuna nyumba tuna viwanja tuna magari 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Kwa hiyo sitaki sana niongee mengi. Tulia kwenye madhabahu, sikiliza kile ambacho mtumishi wa Mungu anachotoa kwa ajili ya madhabahu, kifuati lazima utatoka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Yesu asifiwe sana. Hakika utatoka. Bwana Yesu asifiwe kwa sababu tumeuona mkono wa Mungu ukituinua kutoka chini kwenda juu. Na kumbuka kuna wakati fulani hata kule Ngaramtoni nilishuhudia baba akaniambia mwakali kunataka tuende Mwanza. Nikamwambia sawa baba. Na kumbuka hiyo safari ilikuwa tunaenda kwa ndege. Akafanya process za ndege, tukawa tuko pale airport kia pale. Kwa wakati tumesha kaguliwa tumeingia ndani ya ndege ile ndege wakati inaanza kuondoka unajua askofu anapoongea na wewe hawezi kuambia Mungu anasema hapana ya anaongea kama kuongea lakini mimi najua ni Mungu anasema ndani yake akaniambia ndege takapokuwa inaanza kuondoka kuchukua usawa kuondoka nawe utaanza kuinuliwa kwa namna hii Bwana Yesu asifiwe Kipindi hicho ananiambia hivyo hivyo bado tuko kwenye nyumba ya kupangisha bado sisi tuko chini sana basi mimi nika nikashika ile maneno kweli ile ndege ilivyokuwa inaondoka nika nikasema ndani ya moyo wangu Mungu lisema na mtumishi wako ndege takavyokuwa inaondoka ndipo na mimi utaniinua kwa hiyo nikashikilia ile maneno kwa jinsi ninavyoondoka namna hii na mimi sibaki chini na mimi ninainuka hivyo hivyo Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana kwa hiyo tukaenda Mwanza ile siku tunarudi kumbe baba yeye hajasahau hapana. Kwa hiyo tumepanda tena ndege kutoka Mwanza tunarudi Arusha, ndege wakati imechukua usawa wa juu imetulia. Baba akaniuliza, "Mwakaliku unakumbuka wakati tuna tunatoka Kilimanjaro kuja Mwanza nilikwambia nini?" Nikamwambia "Ndio baba nakumbuka, uliniambia kwamba ndege itapokuwa inaondoka kuchukua hatua na hiyo Mungu anakuinua kutoka chini kwenda juu." Akaniambia "Sasa jinsi ilivyo tulia juu namna hii Mungu amekuinua juu namna hii Bwana Yesu asifiwe Nimalizie kwa kusema baada ya muda mfupi tu ndipo tukaona sasa Mungu anaanza kufungua njia zetu anaanza kufungua ni kwa namna ambayo mimi mwenyewe sikuelewa hata anafunguaje kwa kweli Mungu anapoanza kufungua hakuna anayeweza kuzuia Bwana Yesu asifiwe Kaa kwenye madhabahu Kaa kwenye madhabahu sikiliza kile ambacho Mungu anasema diko kutoka kwako. Asante sana baba askofu, asante mama, asante mchungaji laki, na shukuru sana kanisa kwa ujumla. Asante sana. Roho wa Bwana Mungu juu yangu. Bendewa atulia watoa. Atelia taifa la Mungu. Atelia wana wa Mungu wale. Una mashtaka tena juu ya. Atelia vizazi vya. Siku tatu za kufunguliwa jijini Mwanza. Kamati ya maandalizi ya huduma chini ya mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Elibariki Sumbe imekuandalia mkutano mkubwa wa injili katika viwanja vya furahisha jijini Mwanza. Mkutano huu utaongozwa na mtumishi wa Mungu Askofu Elibariki Sumbe kutoka jijini Arusha kuanzia tarehe tano hadi tarehe saba mwezi wa tano 2023. Muda ni kuanzia saa kamili mchana. Kumbuka ni siku tatu za kufunguliwa na kuwekwa huru mbali na laana uchawi Roza kukataliwa, roza mizimu, miungu, majini na magonjwa wote watafunguliwa na wasioweza kutembea watatembea ni katika viwanja vya furahisha jijini Mwanza. Mawasiliano ni 0766960220 na 0782570710 unaposikia tangazo hili mjulishe na mwingine Watu wote mnakaribishwa. Ulikuwa ukitazama kipindi cha Vuka Yordani. Usikose kipindi hiki wiki ijayo. Muda na wakati kama huu hapa Channel 10 Television.